I'm a lonely Goomba, stuck between two pipes. Well, guess I keep on gaming for the rest of my life. Another day, another Donkey Kong game. And well, I'm a Goomba of my word. So today, we're going to be checking out Donkey Kong Jungle Climber on the old Nintendo DS. You know, I'm still amazed this game even exists, considering I'm pretty sure the previous game didn't exactly set the world on fire. You know, I remember pretty much being the only person in the world excited for this game, back when it was revealed at E3 2007. Heck, it wasn't even revealed during the main press conference. The trailer was just stealth dropped later that day. That's how much Nintendo cared about it. But I cared. I was low-key pretty hyped. But is the game actually any good? Well, uh, let's find out. So, the game starts off with the DK crew just chilling. You got Donkey Kong and Diddy playing some beach ball, Funky's getting ready to surf, and from the looks of it, Candy has had some work done. And Wrinkly Kong is still a tormented soul, doomed to forever haunt the living. You know, same old, same old. But suddenly, Diddy comes up in like he just saw a ghost or something. Well, besides Wrinkly. And by ghost, I mean gigantic floating banana on top of a mountain. Which, fair dues to Diddy, that is pretty unusual. But uh, instead of asking where this banana came from, or if it's a sign of the end times, DK just wants to eat it. And that's it, that's the story of the game. Gluttony. So, uh, after, quite frankly, an absolutely ridiculously long and unnecessarily extensive tutorial, we make it to the first stage. And, okay, as you can probably tell, the visuals are completely different, opting for a style much more reminiscent of the original country games. I'm not really the biggest fan of how it looks, but it still doesn't look terrible, so I guess it comes down to personal taste. But what else is new? Well, let's just go over all the key things, shall we? First up, DK controls way, way better this time. He's much less floaty, a lot faster, and can immediately attack without having to sit around and charge up every time. Heck, he can even grab on ledges this time. They really refined how DK feels here, and it's a huge improvement all around. The levels are also substantially bigger this time too. I mean, it's hard to even put into words how big they are. These levels went from little 30 second obstacle courses to huge sprawling canvases, jam packed with secrets and collectibles. See, each stage now has 4 Kong letters to collect, 5 banana coins, a hidden oil barrel and a giant DK coin. That's a lot more crap to collect. And they all unlock stuff too, which I'll talk about later. And just like the classic Donkey Kong Country games, hitting a DK barrel will now give you Diddy, who not only acts as an extra hit point, but can also be used as a long range attack, or in some cases, he can pick up special items which only Diddy can use. It's a good addition, although it does mean there's no extra Diddy mode this time. Diddy has gone from having his own entire mode to being an extra hit point. <laughs> I mean, that's gotta hurt the old ego. Oh, and the game now has a life system. So, bananas have been demoted from invincibility granting god fruit to uh, extra life fodder. But fear not, for now, there is also collectible gems. Collect a hundred of these and you can break the laws of physics and fly around for a few seconds, which is pretty useful if you suck at the game and you just want to cheese it. And that's basically it. Now, let's delve into the worlds. World 1, Sun Sun Island. It's a pretty basic affair, and if you played the first game, you're gonna find it a bit boring, as it doesn't really add much new. However, these sunflowers would send you absolutely flying, all pretty fun. There's also these big disc things, which you can move around with your momentum, which uh, is a clever new idea. And all around, it's a pleasant little world. But yeah, so far it's been a pretty standard Donkey Kong affair really. But that is about to change, cause the game is about to get stupid as fuck. See, we make it to the top of this mountain, and K. Rule is there with some crystal bananas. He then summons a portal, jumps in, and before you know it, we're being attacked by a giant banana. What the heck is going on? Donkey Kong must be pissed. He came all the way up here expecting to eat himself a big old nana, but instead, he's fighting off a giant banana shaped aircraft. Oh, yeah, typical really. But yeah, it's the first boss, and well, I don't think anyone saw this coming. The boss itself is simple, but it's fun enough. Just hit its big giant red flashing Wii point a few times, and blammo. Oh, hold up. What the fuck is that? Is that a giant talking banana? Well, now I've seen everything. Wait, no, my bad, my bad. It's an alien. It's an alien 
caught an exana bab. And well, let's just hope they ain't here to probe anyone, that's all I can say. Wait a minute, Exananabab? Hmm, something doesn't quite seem right there. Hold up a minute. I knew it! The bastards just wrote banana backwards and slapped an X on it! Totally original alien name there, guys! Yeah, I'm an alien too. My alien name is Exaboog. And my spaceship is a giant Goomba head. I mean, come on, give me a break. So, turns out, K. Ru stole the aliens' crystal bananas, which are super powerful or some crap, I don't know. And since we smashed up this alien spaceship, DK is overwhelmed with crippling guilt and decides to help our freakish banana friend. Instead of, you know, uh, just eating it and going back to the beach, which is what I probably would have done. And we're on to World 2, Lost Island, which is so lost, we found it almost immediately. Eventually, we stumble upon this doodad thing, which allows our banana friend to summon this wormhole, which then takes us to probably the worst stage in any Donkey Kong game ever. First up, the music is horrible. Secondly, this stage is way way too long, and third up, it has a gimmick which absolutely feckin' sucks. See, the top screen is a copy of the bottom screen, only it's not exactly the same. Some pegs and obstacles are in different locations, and if Donkey Kong touches something that isn't the same on both screens, the screen will smash and you'll have to try again. So basically, the entire stage is just your eyes going up and down like a goddamn idiot, playing spot the difference as you're trying to climb around. It isn't exactly hard or anything, but it's just not fun. And then after that, there's this looping maze section that goes on for feckin' ages. It's just a bleeding nightmare. Seriously, Donkey Kong, it's not too late to just eat that banana alien and pretend all this never happened, you know? No one's gonna think less of you. Luckily, the next stage is better. We got some more upbeat music, a cool temple setting, and even some interesting uses for Diddy, using both the screens. We even get this feather, which lets us fly around. It is pretty good. But then my DK finds another one of these bleeding things. Ah, oh, God. Not another mirror maze, please. Only no, because this time, we're transported to, uh, a toy box. I think DK's expression says it all, really. Now they're just throwing random shit at us. One minute, we're in a classic ancient temple, but next, we're getting killed by colourful pencils. Kind of reminds me of those levels in Rayman, actually. Even though uh, barely anyone got that far, because this level was too hard. Yeah, you know the one, don't you? Only bastard level, that one. Anyways, uh, after beating another pretty meh level, we're on to the second boss. See, this Kremlin here absorbs the crystal bananas, becomes a god, and then turns into a Kremlin head made of junk. Oh yes, of course, everyone knows bananas do that, right? The benefit, potassium. The downside, giant head of junk. Seems like a pretty fair trade-off if you ask me. The boss itself, and look, I'm trying not to be too negative here, but it's just not that great either. It's super basic, you just hit it and dodge some attacks and there's nothing to it. I mean really, if I'm gonna be honest with you, so far, I'm not really feeling this game. The levels are kinda dull, the music sucks more often than not, and it's not really doing anything that new. Everything so far, outside of that crappy mirror level, has been done in King of Swing, only better. But you know what? World 3 is when the game starts to get good. It all starts to come together and it just sort of clicks. Yeah, it does have gimmicky stages again, but they're actually fun this time. Like this one here, you got this map on the bottom screen, which shows the locations of the pegs, which you can't really see on the top screen. It's like the mirror stage, but way more forgiving and a lot more fun. You can even see the handprints on the map. It's like that map from Harry Potter, actually. The game also gets a lot more difficult on this world, but in doing so, the level design massively improves. See, the game is best when doing tricky, precise jumps rather than just big open levels with nothing really going on. Even the trippy ass portal level is way better this world. We got bouncy mushrooms, rocket propelled pineapples, climbable grapes, rotating corns, and giant big melons that you have to smack your face into multiple times and then grab onto. You know, there's more new stuff in this single level than the rest of the game combined so far. Finally, this is some great stuff. But just like that, that brief moment of fun is snatched away and we're thrown into perhaps the worst water level in any game ever. It's certainly a contender. It's a murky green swamp with constant currents and whirlpools pushing you around, making it hard to grab onto anything. Topped up with boring slow music that will drain your will to live. Most of this level consists of spinning around, desperately trying to grab onto something. I mean, look at this. It looks fun, right? And this section here has no bleeding pegs at all. I thought this game was called a Donkey Kong Jungle Climber, not 
Donkey Kong uh, floats around for five minutes looking for a switch. I mean, it's terrible. But the next stage, and uh, well, we spend five seconds in a spooky looking area, and then we're teleported back into the toy box world. Well, I guess we're repeating those already. Luckily, it is actually a great stage this time. I mean, those uh, little lever things returned for the first game, and the stage even has a cool idea where you rotate the entire stage to solve some puzzles. So, uh, despite reusing the toy box theme already, it's a great stage. And the one after is even better. It's got great, intense music and some really good level design with some precise jumping which feels really good to pull off. Man, it's just so refreshing to play some good stages. I mean, just look at this. It is so much better. You've even got this big wall on a crate which swings around as you dodge obstacles. I mean, it's a fantastic stage. And the boss is also really great. I mean, jeez, it's like someone finally realised this game doesn't have to suck and cranked that quality up. See, you're against this gigantic uh, robot, but you gotta climb up it, reveal its hidden weak points, and smack them. All whilst dodging these bleeding gatling guns and bombs. I mean, now we're talking. This is what you call a boss fight. And from this point onwards, prepare yourselves for true gaming bliss. I don't know what happened, but the game is just a blast from now till the end. Well, uh, for the most part. Take the next days for example. It starts off with you climbing a waterfall. Then you've got this cave section in which you have to create the pegs to climb via these rocks. And then you're climbing a snowy viney mountain as the weather keeps getting worse. By the end of the stage, you're fighting against a bleeding storm. Now that is a ton of variety for a single stage. I mean, it's amazing really. And the entire world is great too. You got a classic ice level, you got a level inside an active volcano, in which you can change the lava flow by blocking these holes, which is cool. And the stage ends off with a mad dash to escape so you don't become barbecue gorilla. Which, uh, I mean, it might be nice. Heck, even that crappy mirror level this time is way better. It's like they knew that reflection gimmick sucked, because they didn't even use it this time. And this world also gives Diddy a flamethrower. A monkey with a flamethrower is uh, both terrifying and awesome at the same time. On to the next boss then, and like the previous times, a Kremlin eats a magical banana, turns into an almighty spiritual being, and then, uh, well, it turns into a dragon some reason. Well, a dragon with a hook on its tail. But you see, you've got to dodge his attacks and then smack him into these hooks so he can't escape. And whilst he's flailing around in a slightly disturbing way, you're lying up an attack and whammo, another Kremlin defeated. It's another great boss fight, actually. There's two good ones in a row, but our good buddy K. Ruling having none of it and jumps into the brand new K. Cruiser 4. Now with space travel features. Well, looks like we finally did it. We sent a crocodile into space. Isn't science amazing? Problem is though, uh, last time I checked, DK doesn't have a spaceship. So instead, we've got to climb this mountain by foot like a complete chump. Or should I say chimp? No, 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 it's definitely a chump. So the next world is called High High Mountain. I'd imagine this is probably a Funky Kong's favorite island. So it starts off with us climbing this mountain with some real tricky swings. I mean, some of his stuff is bleeding hard. The game ain't messing around now. This is way harder than anything in the last game. But alas, we make it to the top. But to the surprise of no one, we was too late. K. Wu has already got away. Luckily for us, Cranky Kong had a rocket powered jet barrel this entire time. I kind of wish he told us about that before we just climbed a bleeding mountain. Mountain, but uh, beggars can't be choosers. And just like the last game, we've got to fly up. Only instead of a 20 second little level, we got an epic chase into space. Not even sure how DK is uh, still able to breathe at this point, but I admire his determination. So here we are, the K Cruiser 4. And K Boot was not messing around this time. Holy crap! Do you think you could have fit any more buzzsaws in here? From the looks of it, k has been playing a bit too much Super Meat Boy. Jesus Christ. And then there's this part, which I like to call the How the Hell Am I Still Alive section. And then, if things couldn't get worse, that bleeding giant robot is back. Only this time, he's fully operational. This boss is ridiculously difficult. He's got his old trusty gun, but now he's got a giant drill too. And worst of all, it has a bow tie. I mean, that's just going too far. But for real, look at this shit. There isn't a single safe spot. K. Rool just flat out wants DK dead at this point. And when you finally do destroy a weak point, you gotta climb up to the top, dot all these spikes, and get the finishing blow. Which you'll probably die trying and have to do the entire thing again. 
Nah, I can only imagine how many people rage quit here. It's probably quite a lot. But we do it. Only, it's not over yet. Kevul is headed for the Exanonab's alien's homeworld. This is it. The final world. And, oh god. Not this again. It's that bleeding mirror thing. Only, it's actually super hard this time. And it still sucks. I can't believe they had three of these stages, man. I I'm serious. It brings the whole game down with that bad. The next stage is another toy box stage too. It's not much to say. It's pretty good, I suppose. But now, it's time for the final stage. Planet Plantain. And of course, it's shaped like a bleeding banana. Heck, even the houses are shaped like bananas. I mean, that's a bit vain, don't you think? That's like you living in a human-shaped house. I mean, get over yourselves. The level itself, though, and it's a great final level. It combines everything like a good final stage should. And really, it's just nice to see a new environment again, which isn't a bleeding toy box or some shit. So after some tricky platforming, we make it to the final boss. And like the last game, it's just a little 1v1 fight with K. Roo. One of this time, it's actually designed like a boss fight, and it can be beat without cheesing it. It's very easy though, but it's not over yet, because K. Roo then eats of a crystal banana and... Oh yeah. Damn. Damn, boy. Damn, boy, he's thick, boy! That's a thick ass boy! Damn! And thus begins a really fucking difficult final boss. You've gotta climb up these pegs, dodge his hands, dodge these spikes, uh, dodge the meteorites, always making sure this wind doesn't screw you up. I mean, there's a lot to take in. The trick is though, uh, keep Diddy alive, as you can basically cheese the entire fight and just hit him from the ground, skipping out all the climbing stuff. If you lose Diddy though, well, uh, good luck with that. I mean, without Diddy, this is basically one of the hardest boss fights in any Nintendo game. You might as well just kill yourself and try again to be honest. I ain't kidding, it is really freaking hard. But it does seem somewhat fitting to have such a hard boss fight as this is the last time K. Rool will ever fight Donkey Kong. This is it, seriously, this is the last time it happens. Soak it in. But we do it. And to show their thanks, the banana aliens give us uh, some bananas. And well, I think Diddy puts it best. Okay, that's just weird, but also delicious. Can't really argue with that, can you? And then the credits roll, and we get some nice little 3D renders to look at. And that's it. Only wait, there's more, as uh, per usual with these games. First up, remember those oil barrels that was hidden in every stage? By getting those, unlocks a new stage per world. And these range from unbelievably difficult, to the extent you'll probably just fly through it and cheese it all, to so easy you'll wonder why it was even a secret level. And man, look at this final stage, it's bloody hard. It's a tribute to the final stage in King of Swing, which is pretty cool. It's basically the same layout, but way harder. I mean, look at this shit. It's basically Kaizo King of the Swing at this point. You know, I don't think it's humanly possible for the game to get any harder than this. Only, it does much, much, much harder. But how? Well, do you remember those banana coins hidden in every stage? Well, once you finish a game, you can unlock even more extra stages with them. And these are the hardest stages in the game. And there's a ton of them. 11 to be exact. Bringing the stage total to 41. Which is a pretty beefy number. But yeah, these levels man, they have you doing some crazy shit. You gotta spin off this, uh, grab a bomb, hook the bomb into a hole and then swing off it before it blows up. You'll be amazed at some of the shit this game as you do. And then there's this level. You gotta be some kind of gorilla god to beat this. I mean, just look at this shit. Donkey Kong Jungle Climber truly is the Dark Souls of rotating climbing gorilla based games. But, like a true professional, I did it all. Every last stinking level. Only, why am I not at 100%? Well, that's because there's one last bleeding thing the mini games, and there's a lot of them. Someone was really proud of these things. I mean, there's six mini games, each with three stages, and then an endless mode. I mean, that's quite a lot to do. They range from jumping logs to catching bananas to racing in rocket barrels. You also graded the highest being a triple A rank, which is pretty much impossible to do. But luckily, you only need a C rank for 100%, so uh, fuck that. And that's it, 100% completion. And the game even gives you a little special ending where Donkey Kong finally gets his giant banana. We've come full circle, lads. 
but I ain't messing around here. That was really difficult to do. Probably one of the hardest Nintendo games I could think of, actually. I can't believe I did it, to be honest. It's like they knew they weren't gonna get another sequel, so they just cranked it right up to 11 at the end. It makes King of Swing look like Weenie Hut Jr. by comparison. But well, uh, how's the actual game? Is it any good? Is it better than King of Swing? Well, it's weird. Um, it's very ambitious. It took a simple idea and pretty much pushed it as far as it'll go. But in doing so, it loses some of the simplicity of the original. There wasn't really a single bad level in King of Swing, but this game has quite a few shitty levels. And it repeats ideas a ton. You know, I wouldn't really be surprised if most people just dropped the game before they got to the third world. But when the game does find its stride, it elevates way above the previous game. So it's a mixed bag. The highs are as high as funky, and the lows are as low as my self-esteem. But overall, if you like King of Swing, give the game a chance. It's bigger, it's way more ambitious, and it has some amazing moments. Although, uh, those banana aliens were pretty dumb, right? I mean, you're seriously gonna tell me there's a banana-shaped planet with little banana people who live in banana houses? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I mean, it's just so stupid. Wait, uh, uh, don't tell me. There's one behind me, isn't there? Ah, oh, man, not this shit again. What the fuck? And the patron of the week is Meekers, whose profile picture was a Game Boy. And that's why he's patron of the week and you're not. 